Would you like to know a bit about this? Because that's really what this is about. I was really intrigued about um, what happens when you're 10. I'd noticed friends with daughters who, as, as nine-year-olds, they would be like flying around with their arms open wide. And then they get to nine or 10 and suddenly they'd be like this. I thought that's really interesting. Something happens when you're kind of nine or 10 and carries on, 11 or 12, that makes you, as a woman, as a girl, become really self-conscious. And I thought about these girls of that age, and I thought, gosh, you know, you're really vulnerable at that age where you're not a child, well, you are a child, you're not a young girl anymore, and you're not an adult, a young adult, you're in between, you're changing, you're kind of hidden away. Parents say things like, it's an awkward stage. We won't have photographs done this year because it's awkward. And I thought, actually, I want to address this. I want to address this by taking portraits of girls of that age so they are iconic as they are. I don't want them to have to appear anything other than themselves and I would like to ask them questions about their lives. I want to hear what they have to say about their hopes and their dreams and their fears. And that's the starting point. In fact, the very first picture I took oh, is here. Um, it's Mabel. And Mabel was like the kind of the blueprint for the series. And I did say to Mabel, I would like you to choose what to wear. I do not want your parents to have anything to do with the choice. And so I took Mabel's portrait and there was something I felt that was really powerful about it. She looks strong. And that, you know, this work's been exhibited a lot, but it's this picture that set the tone of the series. How did you go about finding your participants? So, so what I did, Claire, was I did a call out on social media and I did a call out online and um, I then wrote a questionnaire where they filled out what their hobbies were, what their age was, um, and really it was about them kind of actually investing in it. I wanted the girls to choose to be part of it, that was really important to me, that they chose to be part of the series. And there were some life sort of like notable moments with some of the girls within the project. Yeah, you know, this project has been going on for five years. It's, it's the end of the project now, five years. It's a long haul thing. It's like a PhD in some ways. There have been times when I've done the work and I thought, why am I doing this? I've lost the plot and then I've kind of got myself over that. What, I've, um, what I did um, was I would have the same backdrop, so I have a, a grey black drop, have the same lighting set up, and the whole point is a negotiation between me and them. So when I take the portrait of those girls, I always want them to be looking directly into camera. So if you have a look at, um, yeah, I'll just take this one, of Alice here. I want them to look directly into camera. They're looking at you. So I talked about the difference between staring and looking, and I'll talk about why. Because when these pictures are out there, I want you to be looking at your audience. Because often, we look at the pictures, don't we? But actually, when this work is in exhibition, these girls are looking at us. And it's slightly uncomfortable for some people, but it gives them a certain power. It changes that relationship. Um, and we talk about how they're going to stand. Some of them want to stand like that. Some of them want to stand like that. I have two lights that I use now. I used to just use one and I change that light according to how the light's different with every girl. So it looks different with every girl. And so I look and I teach the girls at the same time. Once I've done that, I do an interview. So this, in the interview, I ask them their name, their hobbies, I record it. Um, I ask, what do you love? What would you like to be when you're grown up? What are you scared of? So ask really fundamental questions. I don't push them for the answer. I just give them space to answer if they want to. Um, and then I got to, I'm just going to pick one picture out because I've learned through the doing of this work, if I can find, oh yeah, this is Olivia. So Olivia was a little, little girl. 
and she came to me and she uh, was so full of energy. Like some girls are really shy. Olivia was like this powerhouse of girls. She looks quite grown up in that picture, but she was like really little. And she was so engaged in the process. And then I took the portrait of her and then I did the interview. And then at the end of the interview, she said to me, is there anything else you would like me to say? And I was like, no one has ever asked me that. You know, they're quite happy to answer the questions. No child has ever said to me, is there anything else you would like me to say? So I then said, Olivia, is there anything you would like to tell me? So if I can find Olivia, I'll tell you what Olivia said. And I'm so glad that she was um, brave enough to kind of ask us. But so Olivia said, I wish to have happy life and accomplish my dreams. Actually, before I go to the next bit, I had noticed that Olivia's lips, she looked really cold, her lips were a bit blue when she came in. And I thought that was quite unusual, but then I, you know, I just ignored that. And then this is what she said. And this is what extra thing she said. I was born with a heart condition. Basically, I have four chambers in my heart and only two of them are working. I have been for seven major operations and I'm due for another one in six months. I used to be worried, but now I'm used to them. So it's normal. Now, that is so much part of who she is and I wouldn't have known if she had not said to me, is there anything else you would like me to tell her? Because obviously I didn't ask questions that enabled her to say that. Um, so from then on, thank you Olivia, she's great, from then on I would say to the girls, is there anything else you would like to tell me that you haven't told me? It's lo you know what's fantastic, it's when it's exhibited, so I, the last ex exhibition was in the late, before then it was in a huge contemporary art gallery and some of the girls came and initially some of them were a little bit overwhelmed but a lot of them feel so proud, particularly as the years have gone on, to be part of it. And they see it as something significant. And I think that impacts on how they see themselves. So though it can, so it is, that I think most, well, they do actually. Who would not want to be in BuzzFeed as a kid? It's like, they think it's cool. So, um, but I will always say, if any, there's, they obviously have to do model releases. So I tell them what's going to happen, they know what's going to happen. And obviously nowadays, if one of the girls came to me and said, no, you know what, I don't want that picture to be... It, it, then I would do my best to take a picture out, but that hasn't happened. I think because they change a lot as well, they become more grown up and they just see that as their younger self. And um, So I find you really inspirational and I love how I feel like you're you and you're happy to share, you know, any sort of like things where you felt unconfident. I think that's true of artists that we're maybe hiding away sometimes our doubts about ourselves. So it's very inspirational. Um, I don't know if you have any advice or yeah. what's next for you. Look, I spend my life in fear, in a state of fear, like the monk picture, seriously. I know, I know it's like, she's so confident, but actually, no, I still bent over my laptop editing pictures feeling completely like isolated, lacking in, in the knowledge that I can actually do stuff. You know, a lot of people talk about things. You do it and you have to be prepared to do stuff that's rubbish in order to, to get somewhere. So you go through the, uh, you know, if I take a portrait, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do any good job if I'm expecting it to be brilliant. So I take risks. And I think all of you who are photographers or artists Take, take, do things, push yourself, do things that maybe you feel uncomfortable with because you're not sure you're good enough or you're not sure you can do it and push through that fear because nobody dies when you do that sort of thing. It's only, it's, it's a kind of imaginary thing in your head. So I would just say the only reason I'm any good at what I do is because I push through that fear and I push through those nerves and I'm really kind of passionate about the subject matter and I really do think that you can do it, you can all do it, it's just, and again, you put in your hours doing it. Don't think that people are going to say you're rubbish, it doesn't matter what other people say, it might hurt a bit, but just, just, you know, that, I guess, yeah, just carry on exploring and find, use the camera as a tool to find out about, out about the world that you're interested in. Thank you so much.